hit it. Good day, YouTube. Robert J. Morris here. And uh, uh, last week, somebody posted uh, a link to this story here where fluoride's officially classified as a neurotoxin in world's most prestigious medical journal. Goes on and, and covers it quite well, actually, which uh, refers back to this article in the Lancet Neurologic, uh, Neurology website here. Um, I'm just going to dive right in and we're going to ask a few questions here. Um, we are going to go into whether or not the Nazis used fluoride in concentration and death camps, or if they didn't, we're going to talk about the what they would normally refer to as the five eyes, uh, what levels of, of acceptable fluoride PPMs uh, are considered in, in those countries. Also, we're going to ask some other questions regarding common sense all right so anyway um first off let's just jump right into this lancet uh bit here neurodevelopmental disabilities including autism attention deficit hyperactivity disorder dyslexia and other cognitive impairments affect millions of children worldwide and some diagnoses seem to be increasing in frequency Industrial chemicals that injure the developing brain are among the known causes for this rise in prevalence. In 2006, we did a systemic, systematic review and identified five industrial chemicals as developmental neurotoxicants. Lead, methylmercury, polychlorinated biphenyls, arsenic, and toluene. Since 2006, epidemic Epidemiological studies have documented six additional de developmental neurotoxicants. Manganese, fluoride, chloropyrifos, dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane, tetra tetrachloroethylene, and the polybrominated diphenyl ethers. Great. That's a mouthful also. We postulate that even more neurotoxicants remain undiscovered. So... This was published in February 2014. And uh, numerology experts will love those numbers and the week that one took place. Nevertheless, we'll scroll down. There's a lot of really good stuff to read in here. Um, it goes into uh, fetus development. Uh, it goes into um, neurotoxicants breaking the, the, the blood-brain barrier, that sort of thing. Um, but I just want to kind of focus on a couple little bits here. Uh, okay, here we go uh, about adding the fluoride to drinking water. A meta-analysis of 27 cross-sectional studies of children exposed to fluoride in drinking water, mainly from China, suggests an average IQ decrement of about 7 points in children exposed to raised fluoride concentrations. Confounding from other substances seemed unlikely in most of these studies. Further characterization of the dose response association would be desirable. Now, again, like I was saying, this is 2014. We're going to come back to that because other studies and other opinions were created in 2006. Now, we will get into that. So, scrolling on further down, uh, I do believe I had a couple of other uh, marks here. Oh, I know what I wanted to show you. Uh, down here, here's the actual paper, which would be item number 44. You could look up that uh, paper yourself if you like. I will put the links to these in the description below. Now, okay, point, set, and match, so to speak, here, because if the Lancet is publishing it, then it must be true, right? However, mainstream media does not seem to want to cover this, nor do they want to go into the differences between... Uh, uh, it's uh, sodium fluoride and calcium fluoride. One of them is naturally occurring. The other one is an additive. The sodium fluoride, here, best told by this guy here. There's a nice little debate. I'll uh, play some of this for you. In 60 seconds from now. Uh, Dr. Dunn, is it true or false that sodium fluoride is a basic ingredient in rat poison? 
I think it's fair to say that sodium fluoride is contained in a rat poison, and I think it's also fair to say that it's contained in tea. Uh, what comparison you wish to draw from that statement will be up to you to draw it. Uh, it is an ingredient of rat poison. Dr. Dunn, isn't it also a fact that iodine is used in salt? Uh, I would, would like to make that point if we didn't have it in the salt. If we didn't have a statutory requirement to have it in salt, we'd have a, a goodly number of goiters about, which is, we don't have now. Is sodium fluoride in water any more dangerous than iodine in salt, Dr. Dunn? We believe that sodium fluoride in water in the proper proportions is in no way dangerous or harmful to health. Why then are you determined to force this on the people without a vote? Uh, I don't think I am prepared to force anything on people because I have no legislative authority to do anything. I will attempt to persuade people that it is a desirable thing, and perhaps we could draw an analogy here to an educational system. I live in Etobicoke where you do. My older boy goes to school. I really believe it's beyond my competence to vote on any type of curriculum of study or any type of pedagogical approach to his learning because I think people of greater training should perhaps so make... So the, uh, the citizens decisions. aren't intelligent enough to decide for themselves whether they want a rat poison shoveled into their drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dunn, uh, Mr. Sinclair and I have been on opposite sides of this question for a long time. Yes, he I've has, observed that. He has, uh, he has uh, broadcasted uh, continually mm -hmm. against it, and I have written in favor of it in my column of the Telegram. Now, I suggest to you, Dr. Dunn, I would like to ask you, rather, isn't it a fact that every reputable medical and dental organization in North America favors fluoridation of water. That's a loaded question. Why don't you ask him? I am asking. <laughs> I am asking. Isn't it a fact? Isn't that a fact, Doctor, that every medical and dental association in North America is in favor of fluoridation of water? That is a fact, and I think you might also I add the World, it a fact. The world it Health Organization fact. itself. And, and, and isn't it a fact that the Provincial Health Department of Ontario has endorsed fluoridation? As well as the Minister and isn't it also of a fact and that And isn't it also a fact that, that, in every, <laughs> that in every center where fluoridation has been tried over a period of years, it has been found beneficial to the health of children, to the health, the health of the teeth of children? Emphatically, yes. Right. Doctor, I'm 57 years old. How old are you? I'm 33. I've got all my teeth. How many have you got? <laughs> uh, I have them all except third molars, which just all weren't positioned. Third. Well, I have them all of mine. Mine were knocked out in a car crash long ago. But I don't know what that is proving. <laughs> no, it doesn't prove anything. It proves that I was brought up by cleaning my teeth and not by taking rat poison in my water, so I've got my teeth. The fact remains that 98% of our population suffers adversely from dental ill effects, and it seems to me only uh, reasonable to try and do something to prevent this uh, horrible increase in Why don't you advise case. that they clean their teeth? Well, we've done that until our heads are flat, hitting them against brick walls. Dr. And Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a voice in the wilderness, I'm Jim. Dead, <laughs> Jim. 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 You were very brave. I'd just like to ask this question. Are, are there any proven cases where fluoridation has had an injurious effect, uh, effect on the health of people? There are certain individuals who attempt to make certain claims which have never been supported by any reputable scientific organization on this country. Doctor, when you ha I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, would you finish what you have to say? I was thinking of the I was time. just going to make the point that an organization such as the Canadian Medical Association and Canadian uh, Dental and American Medical Association are not going to endorse a procedure which is not only going to harm the public, but harm ourselves, who after all live and bring up our families in these communities as well. And isn't it a fact also, Doctor, that, uh, that the dentists... The dentists will actually be harming their own, uh, their own profession in the, in, the, in the sense that they won't be making as much money if, we all have, uh, if all our children have sound teeth. I think a basic premise of any health profession, physician or a dentist, mm -hmm. is that he attempts to eliminate the need for his service. Exactly. I don't like to sound trite, but that is the principle under which we operate. The dentists have wanna, nothing to you lose. you want to force it on people against their wishes. For instance, the Christian scientists. You're saying that, specific. I'm not. What yes, about I'm iodine and salt? It. Isn't that the same uh, analogy? I don't know. I'm, I'm objecting to being compelled to take medication. You object to take table salt? No. You, how well, about, you have to. How, you about, have to chlor how about chloride in the water, in the drinking and water? Gordon, do you object Two to, wrongs don't make to it vaccination? Right? Do you object, uh, object to having your children and grandchildren vaccinated? Come against my wishes, yes. I wouldn't object in that case. But I do object to this rat poison being shoveled into my water. <laughs> Your children have to be vaccinated in certain circumstances. So do they. 
And I think it's quite right because it's for the protection of the community. The reason you drink, the reason you drink chlorine on your water is because you know it's necessary. And chlorine is a deadly poison, isn't it? No. Yes, of course it's a deadly. Well, gentlemen, poison. <laughs> the basis for poison gas. Before uh, Mr. Tom Payne and Mr. Sinkler square off, I think we should thank our guests for being such a good sport and coming to our program. And uh, thank you for taking time out from your busy schedule. Yeah. So. Several times, or Gordon Sinclair went on to say uh, and make comments saying that he doesn't want rat poison shoveled into his drinking water. It is actually quite a good point that he makes. Why would he say that? Um, yeah, in their banter back and forth, said that sodium fluoride is a component of rat poison, but it actually goes a little bit deeper than that. Here's an interesting comment left by a user um, on this debunking the myth of water fluoridati fluoridation by Hitler. Um, which we will get into. Um, I guess it was, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a link to beliefnet.com. Again, look, the, the, the accuracy of all of these could be far and sweeping. Let's just, uh, let's just humor it for a second. I will supply all links to all of this. I do not want to spread disinfo, but at the same time, I want to try and go down this rabbit hole with all of you. Um, water fluoridation started in the 1920s when the manufacture of aluminum was flourishing. The production of the metal created toxic waste that had to be disposed of at a substantial cost. The producers, hence, had to find innovative ways of cutting their costs, namely by getting others to buy their waste. Yes, that's where the sodium fluoride first came from was a waste byproduct from the aluminum manufacturing industry. They started with marketing their fluoride waste as an insecticide and rat poison. Subsequently, they found a larger market for the chemical waste by convincing people that adding fluoride to water helps prevent cavities. May I remind you, this is sodium fluoride, not calcium fluoride, which comes with its own irony anyway when we talk about calcification of the pineal gland and your gray matter in your noodle upstairs there um, but anyway we'll get to that after the advertising techniques they used were so persuasive that the masses were bought over even though the claims of fluoridation benefits were supported by little or no evidence and it's the wrong type of fluoride yes yeah the bodies do need fluoride but not the type used in fluoridated waters um, and it says, in nature, fluoride occurs in the form of calcium fluoride. It is found in soil, plants, natural water bodies, and is beneficial to our bones and teeth. So you would be doing yourself just as much good eating vegetables, eating healthy, without having to drink fluoridated water. But I don't want to um, get into should we shouldn't we that's not even the point i want to create awareness of how we got to where we are today okay um when i looked up and did a little bit of research on whether or not hitler um actually put fluoride to dumb down the uh the citizens or should i say citizens uh to dumb down the inmates there in the camps um Many, especially in the truth community, would say that it was done to keep the people docile and uh, unwilling to fight back, which is why they're doing it to the people today, to make them passive, uh, you know, in, in most of the developed nations, so that the governments could roll over us and do as they please. I'm not here to support pro or con uh, with that argument. I am just going to show you where we are today and how we got there. There is people on both sides of the fence saying that Hitler used it, that he didn't use it. Um, on this site, on this page, it says, yes, fluoride was used in Nazi concentration camps in the gulags of Siberia to make prisoners docile and easier to control, blah, 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 blah. Then um, on the next one, truth about fluoride doesn't include Nazi myth. And this was when, uh, this is when uh, Florida County was uh, putting this up for a vote. Um, and then there's another one here on, sorry, in this article here, debunking the myth of water fluoridation, it goes to say, no, they did not. It's just one of the many myths floating around and, and repeated ad nauseum by anti-NWO activists and libertarians, etc. 
blah, 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 blah. There's a... It goes on for, for quite a bit here. You can read both sides. Both sides actually make a little bit of sense. I mean, history is so distorted that nobody really knows what has any relevance to the truth at all, to be honest. I think it can be said, if you read between the lines, that somebody knew something about something, and I don't think it had teeth involved. Maybe we can explore that another time. Let's look at where we have fluoridated water right now. Okay. Uh, I know Wikipedia is not the source, but uh, here we have a nice collection of numbers. And for all intents and purposes, it should, uh, it should do us just fine for now. So, yeah. So I'm sticking here to the UK, Canada, United States, Australia, New Zealand. Most of you probably know why. If I didn't say your country, please don't be angry, but do your research as well because the numbers will apply to you. Um, in the United Kingdom, we have around 10% of the population of the UK receives fluoridated water. Uh, half a million people receive water that is naturally fluoridated with calcium fluoride and about 6 million total receive fluoridated water. The Water Act 2003 requires water suppliers to comply with requests from local health authorities to fluoridate their water. And then down below, the self-central strategic health authority carried out the first public consultation under the Water Act 2003, and in 2009, its board voted to fluoridate water supplies in the Southampton area to address the high incidence of tooth decay in children there. You know, just for uh, shits and giggles, I decided to just just try out a quick little search for child obesity in the UK for 2003 to 2009 and guess what I found I found this nice little chart there was a huge uptick in uh, child obesity uh, due to uh, sugar and uh, and bad eating habits so that would explain the 2 decay problem reaction solution let's put fluoride in the water instead of teaching our kids to eat properly yeah great okay so we gotten past that one now um, let's go back to this week Wikipedia entry here. It was reported in 2007 that the UK milk fluoridation program is bad enough. It's not just going into water. It's going into milk as well. It centered in the northwest of England and it involved more than 16,000 children. And since it's a, a program, probably had a beginning and end in a study period. So we'll see how that goes if we uh, look that up a little deeper. The decision whether to fluoridate while in Canada, lied with local governments with guidelines set by provincial, territorial, and federal governments. Brantford, Ontario became the first city in Canada to fluoridate its water supplies in 1945. In 1955, Toronto approved water fluoridation but delayed implementation of the program until 1963 due to a campaign against fluoridation by broadcaster Gordon Sinclair. Sinclair, that was the video that you've just seen. The city continues to fluoridate its water today. In 2008, the recommended fluoride levels in Canada were reduced from 0.8 to 1 milligram per liter to 0.7 milligrams a liter to minimize the risk of dental fluorosis. Ontario, Alberta, and Manitoba have the highest rates of fluoridation, about 70 to 75 percent. The lowest rates are in Quebec, about 6 percent. British Columbia, 4 percent. You found in Labrador, 1.5 percent with none of it and Yukon having no fluoridation at all. Overall, about 45% of the Canadian population had access to fluoridated water supplies in 2007. A 2008 telephone survey found that about half of Canadian adults knew about fluoridation, and of these, 62% supported the idea. United States. As of May 2000, 42 of the 50 largest U.S. cities had water fluoridation. In 2010, 66% of all U.S. residents and 74% of U.S. residents with access to community water systems received fluoridated water. In 2010, a U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention study determined that 40.7% of adolescents aged 12 to 15 had dental fluorosis. In 1999 to 2004, in response, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, together with U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, were proposing to reduce the recommended level of fluoride in drinking water to the lowest end of the current range, 0.7 milligrams per liter of water, from the previous recommended maximum of 1.2 milligrams per liter. This could effectively terminate municipal water fluoridation to areas or in areas where fluoride levels from minimal, mineral deposits and industrial pollution exceed the new recommendation. 
Well, Australia now provides fluoridated water for 70% or more of the population in all states and territories. Are we seeing a trend here, guys? We're seeing trends between 60 and 80% roughly. I'm just, just throwing that ballpark out there. But we're, we're seeing a very, very similar concentration of recipients of fluoridated water, if you haven't noticed so far. Anyway, many of Australia's drinking water supplies began fluoridation in the 1960s and 1970s. Again, we're seeing a trend here. By 1984, almost 66% of the, of the Australian population had access to fluoridated drinking water, represented by 850 towns and cities. Some areas within Australia have natural fluoride levels in the groundwater, which was estimated in 1991 to provide drinking water to approximately 0.9% of the population. The use of water fluoridation first began in New Zealand in, in Hastings, 1954. A commission of inquiry was held in 1957. And then its use rapidly expanded in the mid-1960s. Some people out there um, theorized that a lot of these uh, legislations and things that get rolled out to the other countries within the Five Eyes usually start off in New Zealand. And in this particular case, that trend does show uh, true here. Uh, New Zealand now has fluoridated water supplied to about half of the total population. Of the six main centers, only Christchurch and Tauranga do not have fluoride, fluoridated water supply. Wellington's water supply is mostly fluoridated, but the suburbs of Paton and Karokoro receive a non-fluoridated supply. In 2013, a Hamilton City Council committee voted to remove fluoride from late June 2013. A referendum was held during the council elections in October 2013 with approximately 70% of voters voting for fluoride to be added back into the water supply. And in March 2014, the council voted 9 to 1 to reintroduce fluoride into the supply. March 2014. Okay, well... Um, that is exactly one month after this Lancet article came out in Lancet Neurology. So there's another page here on how fluoride affects consciousness and the will to act. So I might as well just briefly get into this. Um, some may say it's a bit of a hippy dippy kind of website. Uh, it's definitely an activist site. Again, I'm not trying to purport that any of these are officially accurate to any degree. However, they do provide us a foundation to start a discussion and start asking some questions. Um, in this particular case, they just go on to say that new evidence is linked fluoride and other chemicals to brain disorders. What other unknown effects might this industrial byproduct added to our water supply have? And these guys know it's an industrial byproduct. Um, examination of water's fluoridation's shadowy history reveals potentially disturbing ramifications for human consciousness. Again, somebody knows something. And there's a reason why uh, fluoride is in the picture at all. Um, numero uno, we know it's an industrial waste from the beginning of the Industrial Revolution with aluminum production. And as with all waste, the easiest way to get rid of waste is to reutilize it. Now, if there was some kind of clever uh, program that was created to promote the use of sodium fluoride in drinking water, then it was a way of getting rid of waste. And it was like selling a used car to the people. Now that The Lancet in 2014 has literally published that it's a neurotoxicant, we're two years later, people. Why aren't moms and dads on the phone ringing up their city hall seeing if they can get this shit shut down? Are you too docile? Are you too pacified? I'm not going to get into uh, the, the, the big, 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 huge world of, of what's going on and causing autism because there are several things and... Uh, there's lots of there's lots of ins and outs and what have you when it comes to this kind of thing. But uh, I will say this: um, if you want to stop putting poison in your and your children's body bodies, start picking up some phones, start writing up some letters, start acting. If you don't believe that fluoride is causing pacified people, 
then prove us wrong. Make a call, write a letter. Peace. I'd like to ask this question. Are, are there any proven cases where fluoridation has had an injurious effect, uh, effect on the health of people? There are certain individuals who attempt to make certain claims which have never been supported by any reputable scientific organization on this country.